Hello and welcome to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew, call sign AC3DS, and I'm going to show you in this video how to put together a Fox Hunt transmitter using an Arduino Uno and a relay. And there's really two main ways of doing this. The first was brought to my attention by uh, Red Summit RF, and uh, he, uh, he put together a great video on how to use a relay module, uh, which has the relay, some uh, terminal blocks, some header pins, uh, transistor, resistors, diode, all baked into one module altogether. Uh, so I definitely recommend that you check out his video. It's a really good explanation of how this works and functions together uh, using a Baofeng, you know, headpiece, uh, ear, ear microphone thing, um, you know, the, the existing cable for that and just snipping it off. Good video, works, um, but I wanted to go a slightly different route with it. And my reasoning for that is because this cable I have found to be just a little bit finicky. Um, twist it just a certain way and it loses connection. Um, maybe mine have had, mine's, the ones that I've tried this with have just had shorts in them. I, I'm not sure, maybe my, my soldering job just wasn't perfect, um, but I just wanted to, to do this a little bit in a different way that gave me what I felt was a little bit more stability. Uh, but great way, definitely check out Red Summit RS video. Uh, so the way that we're gonna do it though is what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a proto shield and we're going to lay out each individual component on the proto shield. I'm gonna show you how to solder it all up, how to, how to orient it, we're gonna walk through the code, and finally do a diagram breakdown of this board as well. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the plan. Let's jump in. For this build, we're gonna need two 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve jacks, a five volt single pole, single throw relay, some a well one two n two 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 a transistor a one n four oh oh seven diode a one k uh, resistor some arduino pin headers some solid core wire an arduino uno and an arduino proto shield and so what i've just done is i've actually just pushed those uh arduino pin headers into the arduino and i'm seating now the proto shield on top so that way it just makes it a whole lot easier to solder. So it looks pretty good. And now time to do some soldering. All right, with them all soldered up there, let's just take a quick look. And they look okay. I, uh, I didn't have any 60, 40 or uh, 67, 30, 63, 37 solder. So I had to use uh, some, uh, some lead free solder, which just always leaves things looking kind of grainy and dull but such as it is that's what i had on hand now i'm installing the tip ring sleeve jacks and they were a little bit tough to get seated in uh, but uh, it, it eventually it eventually worked um, required a little bit more pressure than i was expecting um, now i'm just going to go ahead and solder those And now I'm just testing it with the multimeter for connectivity and just making sure that in fact, I've got a, a good solid connection between the leads. So here's the single pole, single throw relay. Uh, and it has the, the two that are parallel with each other. Those two uh, are the, the actual coil um, that has to be energized. And I'm gonna line that up with the five volt part of the uh, the proto shield and now I'm just gonna solder it all up time to put the transistor in this is that 2 n222 a transistor 
and uh, the the orientation for this it, it goes actually uh, collector no uh, bases in the center and then collector and emitter are on the ends um, and now it's time for the resistor the resistor is going to pin at number seven and that's also going up to the uh, to the transistor. I believe that's going to the base. Yes, it's going from pin 7 to the base of the uh, the transistor. Now I've just installed the diode, the 1N4007 diode. And that's just uh, jumping between both sides of the relay. And now it's really just wires, installing all of the wires. Um, which just, you know from one spot to the next. And, and I'll throw up the uh, the schematic here so that way you could see what that looks like and why I'm putting each one where I am. Uh, but essentially what's happening is that the, uh, the, the relay is being used to connect the sleeves of both of the, uh, the two tip ring sleeve uh, jacks, right? So on the bow fang there are those two uh, those two plugs the 2.5 millimeter and the 3.5 millimeter and the relay here is is connecting the sleeves of those two plugs uh, and that's what actually allows the push to talk function to happen and by doing so we're able to you know activate and put something onto the mic so now what i'm doing is i'm just i'm uh doing all of the solder bridges. So I soldered everything underneath at first, and then I went back and I'm now just doing the solder bridges. So I, that's generally the way I like to, to do my soldering. So yeah, I mean, you know, it looks okay. Good enough. Oh, but then I realized, no, wait, I forgot to actually connect the power, the five volt power to the, uh, to the closest pin. There was, there should have been three there and I just, I missed one. All right, so let's just test it, make sure that it fits and it seats properly. And yep, it does, fits, looks good. All right, looking good. Time to do some code. All right, so the code is based off of the work of VA6MCP and VE6BTC. So thank you to both of them and everybody else that had any measure or hand in, in contributing to the creation of this code. Um, yeah, I'm just working based off of what they've already done here and making some small, slight modifications to have the code fit the way that I typically like to work in Arduino. Um, so, you know, a few of the things that you might notice if you had uh, accessed the original version of this code is that I've just kind of cleaned up the some of the commenting. I've cleaned up some of the descriptions to fit what makes sense to me a little bit. And then I've taken out some of the excess pieces that weren't necessary, uh, but were still kind of hanging out in the code. Um, now, granted, all of those things had purposes, but just not necessarily to the ends that I was looking for. So it is a little bit different, but not a whole lot. Uh, at the top of the code here, we have our defines. And so we have tone hertz, dit, rest, long length, PTT switch, and audio. You're not going to really want to change PTT switch and audio unless you're using different pins on your particular microcontroller. So if you're using an Arduino Uno and you can use pin number seven and five, well then go ahead and do that. Uh, but if you're, cho if you're choosing to use other pins, then go ahead and make the changes here. Uh, the long length is the, uh, the, a tone that's going to be played at the beginning of every transmission. And so you can just specify how many seconds worth of this long length tone you want played. Uh, for the rest, this is how much time is between transmissions. And so and for me, I put it at 30 seconds. Uh, dit is the actual length of a dit in milliseconds. And then of course, you know, DAS and pauses, everything is based off of the length of a dit. If you wanted to change this, you could. And if the, the consequence of that is going to be that it's going to have, you know, a higher or slower uh, words per minute, essentially. So just, you know, be aware. If you wanted to go faster, by all means, drop this number down. If you wanted to go slower, increase the number. 
Um, and then finally, the, the hertz, if you just don't like the sound, uh, the particular tone that's being generated, you can, you can change this. I know that some people are hard of hearing, and so different tones are, you know, more helpful. And so by all means, change the tone if, uh, if that works better for you. So let's scroll down here through the code a little bit. Uh, here we have our, our string, which is our Morse table. And so you're not going to want to change this at all. Um, this, is, this is set. Uh, and then we have some more uh, variables here. We have some more pieces at play. Uh, but the one in the midst of all of this that you're going to want to change is this string text. And this is what's actually being sent out. So maybe you want this to say, you know, your call sign, you know, fox, come and catch me if you, if you can, uh, you know, find me if you can, what does the fox say, you know, whatever it is that you want to put here. But just keep in mind that it should probably have your call sign in there because, of course, complying with regulations, we do need to put our call sign every so often. So make sure that you do have that as being a part of this. Um, and there are ways of being able to alternate. So after X number of minutes, it does, you know, put your call sign in. Um, you could do that, but I just wanted to keep the code as simple as possible for this first go around. Uh, for the string code, this is where we actually form the Morse from this particular text. So first we have a string of the text uh, of, your, of whatever you want it to say, and then it actually forms it in Morse code using this function here. Um, and then we have a duration, we have an, in, uh, an integer variable of a note uh, uh, at 100,000 or 1 million, um, what is that, what is that, 1, yeah, that's 1 million hertz. Um, so we're just, we're going to be doing a division with this later on. For the void setup, we're just making the uh, PTT switch uh, set to output, we're making the audio uh, uh, pin set to output. Uh, we're taking pin mode pin of 13 to, or sending that out and we're just using we're going to be using pin 13 as a visual indicator on the board because that's connected to an LED directly on the Arduino. Um, you can always comment this out if you do not want um, you know if you don't if you're not using an Arduino that has uh, an LED on pin 13 but if you're using an Uno then it does and it's just helpful it's good to know that things are working properly. Uh, the serial begin is here. Obviously, if you don't want to do any serial debugging, you do not need that on as well. I think actually I've already deleted all the serials throughout the sketch, so I could probably delete that as well. Yep, I did. So I'm just going to delete that because I do not need that. So let's take that out right now. There we go. All right. Now let's talk about the loop. Well, the loop is comprised of uh, first a digital write. So this is what actually turns the switch, the push to talk switch on. And the way that it does this is where what's happening is the push to talk is, is connected to, to pin number seven. So on pin number seven, we're turning that high, which means that we have a five volt current, uh, five volts being applied uh, here. And I forget what it's at, like maybe uh, 0.4 milliamps. I'm, I'm not sure what exactly it is, I forget, or 40 milliamps, excuse me. Um, and that's what's being applied here through this 1000 ohm resistor up to the base of the 2N222A transistor. Now, what's happening here is that the transistor is being essentially turned on, if you will, right? The collector and the emitter uh, on, on opposite sides here of the transistor are now being connected from one to another. So one side is connected to the relay, and when the, when the transistor is in a non-activated state, uh, these, are, these two sides, the collector and the emitter, are not connected to, to each other. And the consequence of that is that the relay can't get back to ground. And if it can't get back to ground, it doesn't have a circuit. If it doesn't have a circuit, full circuit, it doesn't, it doesn't flip the switch, the internal switch, uh, inside of the relay. So in the normally, uh, you know, normally turned off position, right, of the, of, the transist, of the transistor, the relay is off. And the consequence of that is that the switch is in the normally closed position, which is on the top left corner here. So this little switch here can be in the normally closed or the normally open position. And so in the, in the normally closed position, it's connected over here, which actually isn't to anything for us. Um, we need it to go to the, to the normally open. 
And the only way to do that is if the transistor is, you know, is is activated. And if it's activated, then this the the collector and the emitter are connected, and which allows the uh, the ground to be pulled in here uh, for the relay and creating a loop, thus activating the switch, which then turn in turns uh, connects this yellow wire here to this black one here. So it's actually connecting the sleeve of the uh, of the 3.5 millimeter jack to the sleeve of the 2.5 millimeter jack. So that's the sleeve of the 2.5 millimeter on the Baofeng to the sleeve of the 2.5 mil or the 3.5 millimeter on the Baofeng. So that's what that's doing. So again, all that just coming from this one action here of of digital write push to talk uh, push to talk switch turning that on high, and. Then after that, so as soon as it's open, as soon as the push to talk is activated, then we have the play tone. So this is where we're going to play a long tone. Uh, then we're going to wait 250 milliseconds. And then we're going to play the code. And the code is what's being derived from our string, which is being derived from uh, this text here. It's all connected back to this text. And that's when your text starts to actually play. So we're talking about right here. Uh, and then finally, you get to your digital write of your push to talk switch being turned low. And the low means that the uh, that this pin number seven is now not being activated. So the transistor is not being activated. So the relay is going to be deactivated and it's going to go back to the normally closed um, you know, uh, part of the switch. So nothing is going to be happening, right? The push to talk is is being deactivated here in this line. Uh, everything down below is based off of, uh, you know, off of the original, um, the original code and functions the same way. It's all just, uh, you know, what's being used in order to generate the actual Morse code, being able to use, uh, to generate the tone and the spacing for all of the tones. Um, so definitely take a look at this. I'm not going to go through every single step of it here, though. I just wanted you to see what this looked like and the fact that it works out actually quite nicely. Um, so you can see on the, skim on the diagram here on the right-hand side uh, where each piece goes from and to. Uh, for the 3.5 millimeter jack, the tip, which is this uh, pink wire here, it goes all the way over to analog zero. Now, what you'll see is that in this particular code, there is no connection back to analog zero. Uh, one of the other sketches does use uh, DTMF tones to be able to control the uh, to control the Arduino to control what's being sent out, and the way that that works is through the use of uh, the A0 as an input, an analog input, and so it's looking for very specific tones. Um, now, I incorporated this here because I know that at some point I'm going to want to use those DTMF tones, and there is a, a workable sketch already in existence for that, which is, again, uh, based off of you know somebody else's work. Um, however, I, again, I just wanted to keep it simple, so I didn't include it in here in the sketch, I did include this wire here so that way later on I could just use a, you know a new set of code and have it work um, but didn't have to modify the hardware at all. And that's about it. Um, you know again pin number five is where the uh, you know where we're sending the Morse code out on and that's going out to the mic through pin five. But again, that's that's really it. It's not an overly complicated, um, you know, diagram. So let's see how it works in real life. All right. So we've done the build, and we have programmed our Arduino Uno. Now it's time to just put it all together and see how it works. So first things first, the shield is going to go onto the Uno. And I'm just going to slide that right in. Okay, so that fits nicely. Next step is to connect the, uh, the cable, right, both cables. Now what I've done is I've actually kind of twined these together a little bit, and then I put a ferrite uh, on the end here to just help out a little bit. Um, so now 
uh, all I need to do is connect in these two. So I'm going to go one there and one here. And then I'm going to go over to my Baofeng, connect one there, one there. And finally, I'm going to give it some power. So I'm just using a, uh, a power bank to do the powering of the Arduino Uno. I'm going to give it some power. And hey, it worked. That was uh, that was what we were hoping for. Um, so you know, proof that it does in fact work. It can work nicely uh, now. Some of the advanced features in terms of using DTMF tones are not set up at this point using the code that we've, you know, already gone through. But, uh, you know, fully functional. All I have to do now is drop this into a, an ammo can, uh, canister or, you know, another Rubbermaid type tub. And, yeah, we should be good to go. I'm just going to turn that off. So thank you for joining me. I, I hope that this was helpful. If you are looking for the code or the diagram or anything else, uh, check, definitely check in the video notes uh, up at the very top, and I will, I will share all of the documents related to this. So if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. And as always, thank you. Until next time.